Hello! Before I get started today, I wanted to go ahead and let you know that the reason there was no show last Sunday is because I was on a week-long vacation to the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, and it was wonderful, and it was relaxing, but I'm super happy to be back doing Aphra's Artifacts again, talking about some queer Star Wars. So, without further ado, welcome to Aphra's Artifacts, where we do some archaeology of our own and dig into the queer side of Star Wars. I'm your host, Alia Morgane, and it's so great to have you here. Today, we're going to be talking about Dianoga. So, surprise, surprise, not only are Dianoga a queer species, but they're sentient. They're not... Um, non-sentient. They're not primitive. They're not of no consequence. They they think and they love and they choose their gender identity and it is fascinating learning more about them. Um, you can find information about them, information about the particular Dianoga in A New Hope, um, in the story The Baptist, which was written by Nnedi Okorafor. And it was found in the original, from a certain point of view, um, that detailed lives of minor and previously undisclosed characters from A New Hope. It also was a collection of 40 short stories, and it was wonderful. Um, so let me backtrack a bit. The Dianoga, um, as maybe you, you do know, maybe you don't, the Dianoga is the trash compactor monster from A New Hope. Monster. Um, they're not monsters. They, um, so in 1977, people probably thought, oh, wow, this is a vicious, scary creature. In fact, it's not that way at all. So take the title of the story where this information comes from, The Baptist. Ami, the Dianoga in the trash compactor, can sense Luke's connection to the Force. So some... Dianoga have a deep link to the Force, and Ami is one of those. And when she pulls Luke under the water, she's actually baptizing him to prepare him for his future as a Jedi. Um, it's a really powerful, powerful story. But what we're here for is the queer information, the queer stuff. So, Dianoga are... All of them are intersex. So... That means that, and in humans, intersex is along a huge continuum of different expressions of um, sex, whether with chromosomes or with sexual organs. But in the case of the Dianoga, they are all, um, they all have both sets of sexual organs. So they reproduce by exchanging eggs with one another. They exchange eggs. Um, and they both, um, carry out their, their babies to term. So the thing is that they choose their gender. So their, their sex is intersex. Their gender, they get, they are, it's culturally accepted. It's, um, it, well, let me just say this. So they can either be male, female, or diangus. And it's super culturally acceptable to be diangus. It is the most common gender. So most Dianoga represent, uh, represent, uh, present themselves, um, as non-binary, um, as this gender that is neither male nor female. And I think that is super, super cool. So, Let's just real quick. I, I kind of want to put this out there for those that aren't aware. Um, sex has to do with your chromosomes, your sexual organs. Um, gender has to do with how you interact with society, um, how you feel that you are, how you present yourself. Um, so they are two very, very different things. And in this case, the Dianoga are sexually intersex. And gender-wise, they're male, female, or non-binary, um, or um, diangus, as they call it. 
So what do you think about this? Do you think they did a good job? Do you think it needs some work? Comment down below and let me know what you think about the Dianoga. So thank you so much for uh, watching today. And remember to tune in next week for a new video for new content Sunday at 6 p.m. Central. And remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter at Alia Morgan, and peruse my blog at thestarsreview.blogspot.com. May the Force be with you.